This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Philadelphia Phillies faced the St. Louis Cardinals for the final game of the season at Bush Stadium on October 2nd, 1969. Philadelphia was trying to avoid their 99th loss on the season. Coached by George Myatt, Myatt was the interim manager after the Phillies fired Bob Skinner mid-season after falling 20 games under 500. The Phillies had very little star power beyond Dick Allen, who would be traded to the Cardinals five days after this game for Tim McCarver, Kurt Flood, and others. This is the infamous trade that later snowballed into Kurt Flood challenging the reserve clause and demanding free agency. The St. Louis Cardinals were coached by Red Sheendeast, and they came into the game with 86 wins and in fourth place, which was a disappointment following back-to-back World Series appearances in 1967 and 68. This audio is just a partial recording of the radio broadcast. It is missing a lot of the action from the middle of the game. It features St. Louis announcers Harry Carey and Jack Buck. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey from Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis on the occasion of the final game of the 1969 season. Bob Gibson will pitch for the St. Louis Cardinals. All the regulars will be in the lineup. Gibby will be shooting for his 20th victory of the season. Little left-hander Grant Jackson will will pitch for the Philadelphia Phillies. Our guest on the dugout show, one of the fine pitchers of the Redbirds, Nelson Bryles, for whom you'll hear now in just one minute. Our guest on the dugout show tonight, pitcher Nelson Bryles of the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, uh, a lot of criticism around these days. It sure is. Uh, of course, Harry, when you don't have a winning season, uh, I don't mean playing them uh, above 500, but uh, a championship season, uh, uh, there's bound to be more criticism. Uh, I think athletes uh, expect and perhaps anticipate some criticism uh, during a season when you don't win a lot, uh, but that's part of it. Any reaction of uh, you as a player and others I know uh, in the clubhouse as to uh, uh, any references to the way you dress and the way you wear your hair and the kind of shoes you have on? Well, I can only speak for myself, and, and uh, the way this is the way I feel. I feel that the only thing that makes or breaks me as an athlete is what I do on the field. When I cross the white line, it's what I do on the field. And that is open to criticism. Uh, and I don't feel that anything that I do off the field uh, can affect me that much, the way I dress. Uh, I'm sure that uh, side burn short or long can't make me throw the ball any harder, make me have better control, maybe windage or something. <laughs> but uh, the way I dress, this is, this is just an extension of, of what I am personally and not what I am when I'm on the, on the field. Funny thing now, you know, uh, actually, uh, there's no difference between established veterans and the way they dress. I notice the way some of the rookies dress. They dress the same way. You guys are young men. That's exactly right. Uh, we're not in high school anymore or college where uh, we have to be governed as such. Uh, I believe that uh, we're in a position to where most of us are men. And uh, we expect and want to be treated as such. Uh, however, I, I think one thing that, that we have to look at is the fact that because we are athletes and that, that, that we do play at a major league level, we do a lot of traveling. We're exposed to a lot of things that ordinarily people are not exposed to. Therefore, you're ex- you uh, acquire different tastes. You're able to enjoy things that other people cannot enjoy. And therefore, uh, your taste grows. And, and uh, because of the exposure, uh, you develop just wider tastes. And uh, I think this is what, what happens. Isn't this, uh, isn't this the great uh, nation and the great enterprise, the free enterprise that we have, the, the ability for the, uh, for the young man to, uh, to grow in stature and uh, in surrounding? Isn't this what we all are in the business for? Any business? The United States is famous for its Horace Alger type stories, uh, rags to riches, this type thing. And I think if you'll investigate most athletes, they come from humble beginnings, which is wonderful because from these beginnings, they know that through athletics, they have a chance to make something of themselves, perhaps do something for their family uh, in gratitude for the way that uh, they sacrifice, perhaps, in bringing you up. And through athletics, you have a chance to better yourself. You have a chance to, to perhaps wear nice clothes where you weren't able to before. And usually when, when, you, uh, when you're deprived of something, 
when you're able to, to uh, achieve, say, a financial level or, or whatever, and this is something you want right, right away. So perhaps sometimes it's clothes, sometimes it's a new car, but when you're deprived of these things, uh, I think sometimes uh, it's kind of a fulfillment, a goal to yourself that uh, you like these things. And isn't it true that when you do get to these things and you get to this level and you begin to enjoy these things, I would think it would work the other way around, that you would then play harder in order, in order to maintain this level of life. This is the way I feel. Uh, once once uh, you arrive at, at a point, uh, I don't think there's any athlete uh, on our ball club that is self-satisfied. No one is more disappointed in a poor season than the athlete who has a poor season because he has confidence in his ability and he knows that uh, he, he is capable of producing better. So there's no one has, is more critical of anyone than we are of ourselves. So it's uh, when we uh, go out and, and uh, on the field, we know that uh, if we don't hustle, if we don't put out as much as we can, the only person we're hurting is ourselves. Nelly, nice talking to you, and uh, have a great winter. Thank you very much, Harry. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. Nelson Bryles, we'll be back in one minute. Harry Phoenix with the singing of our national anthem. Well, you already know a lot about this ball game. Bob Gibson is the Cardinal pitcher, and Bob is looking for his 20th win of the year. He goes into the contest with a record of 19 and 13, and his opponent on the mound will be Grant Jackson, the Philadelphia left-hander, and Jackson has won 14 and lost 17. Also in this ballgame, Joe Torre of the Cardinals will be seeking his 100th run batted in of the year. The two pitchers are still warming up. Bob Gibson down in the right field corner and Grant Jackson, the left-hander, warming up in the Philadelphia bullpen. George Myatt coaching at third and Billy DeMars at first base for the Phillies. Tony Taylor leading it off. The final game of the year, the Cardinals and the Phils. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. And for the play-by-play, -play, here is Harry Carey. Thank you very much, Jack. Hello again, everybody. The final broadcast of the season. Final game of the year. Bob Gibson trying for number 20. And we're all set to go with Tony Taylor leading off. Hitting 265. First pitch. It's a breaking ball in there for a strike call. One strike and no ball. Taylor, who has hit three homers, is third here. Here's the pitch by Gibson. Fastball, a little bit low on outside. Tim McCarver behind the plate. Joe Torrey at first. Julian Javier at second. Jerry Devon at sharp. Here's the pitch. It's a strike call, a fastball. Mike Shannon's playing third base. Blue blocks and left, Kurt Flood in center, Joe Haig in right. Two strikes and a ball, here's the pitch. Fouled it back into the stand. Two strikes and a ball, Cincinnati and Atlanta. The Reds lead one to nothing, and now Atlanta leads three to one at the end of three. The Braves are shooting for their 11th in a row. Now the signal, two strikes and a ball. The pitch is on the way. And it bounces in front of the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Johnny Briggs will be next. The final game of the year. This is the way it began. With Bob Gibson pitching for the Cardinals. Now the signal given. The windup and the pit. Swung and he struck him out. Tony Taylor goes down swing. On opening day, some six months ago, Bob Gibson, in the opening game of the season, pitched nine innings allowed two runs, left for a pinch hitter. The Cardinals lost it in the 14th. Here's the pitch to Briggs, and it's low and inside. On that occasion, Gibson struck out ten and walked nobody. Hit one man. Now the pitch. And it's a slider inside. The Cardinals had a two to one lead. Now they trailed two to one. They tied it at two to two. And did very little in the last six innings. Two balls, no strikes, a pitch to break. Swung at a curve and he missed. So Bob Gibson, who started it, the same Bob Gibson will end it here tonight. Here's the pitch. Swing on, fly ball, right field. Joe Hay coming in. Under the ball, waiting. And he makes the catch. Two up, two 
down. Here is Johnny Callison. He's had 16 homers this year, driven in 62 runs. Bob Gibson gets set. The first pitch is high and outside. Callison with the Phillies since 1960. The pitch. Isn't there a beauty? Harry Wendell stepped the plate on five. Runners are at first, or rather it's a count is one ball, one strike, no runners on, two out. Here is the pitch and the swung on. High fly ball on the right. Joe Hay coming in will be an easy out. He's got it to retire the stop. So we move into the bottom half of the first. No score. The we go to the bottom of the first. Lou Brock will lead it off for the Cardinals. Red Birds trying to nail down his final game of the season. They lost the first game, you know. In fact, they lost the first three at home. All three of us to the final. Here's Lou Brock, who has a chance to finish at 300. He's batting 298 with 12 homers, 47 runs out of it. Atlanta leads the Reds 3-1 at the end of three. Here's the wind-up, the pitch by Grant Jackson. It's a fastball high and outside. Jackson with a losing ball club is 114. Lost 17. Now the sign. Here's the pitch. Sidearm fastball for a strike call to the D. And that evens it up. One ball, one strike. Grant Jackson looking for his 15th win. Now the delivery. Here it is. Long that he fouled it back, strike two. Two strikes and a ball. Kenny Boyer, formerly a former Cardinal star, now with the Dodgers. Here in the press box tonight. Here's the pitch. And it's low curveball outside. That evens it up. Two balls, two strikes. What'd you do, jump the ball club? I left. We, we, we lost more, I think we have. No, we have, as a matter of fact, uh, we lost more ball games than you have. There's a bouncy ball hit by Brock to Richie Allen, steps on the bag, he's the yeah. You've lost 77, the Cardinals have lost 75. As long as the time, I thought the Dodgers were going to win it all over there. Well, we thought so until the last 10 days, and we, of course, couldn't win a ball game. Uh, I think we lost nine in a row, and the Braves were in the midst of winning nine in a row, so it reminded me a lot of the 57 Cardinals when uh, we lost nine in a row and the Milwaukee Braves uh, won uh, nine in a row. Here's Kurt Flood, one out, nobody on. The pitch of the fastball a little bit inside. Of course you're going down to see Brother Cleese. Well, I don't think I'll take in the playoffs. If they make it to the series, I suppose I'll go down and watch that. Now the delivery to Flood, bouncing ball at the short should be easy. Terry Harmon over the first and time. Two up, two down. Well, are you going to be a coach for the Cardinals next year? No, I think definitely that I can say that I'm not going to do that. I think they've already announced the rehiring of all their coaches. Well, oh, you can always add somebody else. Well, uh, the, the truth is that I'm not, and uh, although I'm looking for a job and uh, can't do anything technically because I'm still under contract to the Dodgers until after tonight. Two men are out, and here's Javier, right-handed batter. Here's the wind-up by Grant Jackson, the pitch. Swung on, a little tough foul. Richie Allen chasing it. Can he reach it? He does. Good running test. In foul territory. That retires the side, one, two, three. And at the end of one inning, no score. We're going to the top of the second inning with no score, and Richie Allen comes up. And we'll defer talking to Kenny Boyer for just a moment because on any pitch, this guy is not to knock down that scoreboard. What power he has. 32 homers, 89 runs batted in, hitting 290. Here's the pitch. Swung and he fouled to strike one. One strike and a ball. With all the problems Richie has, you wonder where in the world he finds time to play at all. I guess that's why he's AWL sometimes. Here's the pitch, and it's a fastball low. One ball and one strike. Ball game in the second inning. Richie Allen. 
The pitch by Gibson. Swung bouncing ball up the middle. Javier to his right. Throws in time. Nice throw. Kenny Boyd, who said a moment ago, as a matter of fact, you were looking for a job. What do you want to do? Sell fours or what? Well, I've already, I already have a job at that time. Uh, I was giving you that uh, little oh, thanks for the plug. Ken's in the automobile business of Herman, right? Herman, uh, Missouri, right. Here is Darren Johnson, first pitch lined in the right center. It's a base hit. Hey, go one hop. So there's the first hit. You want to coach? You want to manage? Or what do you want to do? Well, I've got a pretty open mind. I think this whatever opens up, I guess. Uh, I think this is the time of, time of year when the ball clubs are looking for fellas to, to replace ones that either retire or are fired or quit or what have you. So uh, I, I just have to make the statement that I'm in the market for a job. Uh, stick around. We'll talk things over. <laughs> one out and one on. Here's Ron Stone. Left-handed batter. The stretch by Gibson the fifth. He takes a fastball low. Kenny, how many managers did you play under a major league? Now, Walter Alston, which had to be a great education. No, I'd say he's the finest gentleman manager I've ever seen in my life. And, uh, boy, it was really an experience to spend two years under him. You know, threw me off guard when you asked me the exact number. Uh, I'd have to think just a little bit. Uh, of course, it was Stanky, which is in contrast to all well, the other uh, types. Uh, I'd say I have a lot of respect for Eddie Stanky. Of course, he gave me the first job up here. And I don't think anyone would ever question the fact that he knows a lot of baseball. It's just that uh, he seemed to have the unfortunate uh, position of not being able to get along with the people that he was working with. And, uh, it was Johnny Keene, of course. Johnny Keene, hey. Red Shane Dean, Sally Hemus, uh, Wes Westrom over with the Mets, and uh, Dixie and or, uh, Harry Walker. Here's a pitch to Stone. He swings and he misses. And another the wall Austin type with a temper, uh, Freddie Hutchinson. Oh, he was a great one. Great gentleman. Two strikes and a ball. One on and one out. The pitch to Stone. Strong foul out of play. I suppose he is. I keep comparing him, uh, comparing him with uh, Walter Austin because yeah. I never see him lose his temper either. And yet a strong disciplinarian at the same time who uh, had the greatest respect to the player. They knew when he meant this. Well, I talked to a lot of the guys on that club because I knew some of them that I played with. And uh, he's a great man on fundamentals. And uh, I think that uh, they all admit that that was the difference in the ball club. He, he came over and taught fundamentals. Here's the pitch to Stone High, and the count is even. Two balls, two strikes. Well, I don't know why we shouldn't ask you. Everybody else in the world is being asked. I give you a little time to think of an answer, but what's been wrong with the Cardinals? Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. Swung on, fly ball, right center field. Flood on the run, on the run, on the run, on the run. Can't reach in the base hit. Here's Darren Johnson. He could be thrown out of third. He is thrown out. To Shannon, and the beauty about that is that I think Jerry Devanna was trying to cut the ball off, but it skipped by on a short hop, went right into Shannon and tagged him out. So Stone singles the right center, but Darren Johnson's thrown out from flood to Mike Shannon. Come on. Am I giving you enough time? Well, I tell you the truth, uh, Harry, I couldn't find too much wrong with the Cardinal Ball Club because I think they beat the Dodgers this year uh, something like 9-3, and three, and uh, they look like the ball club of the last two years to us. And uh, uh, I know that some of the other clubs around the league uh, had a little better success with them, and uh, I think it was more just the timing of their base hits more than any other, than any other thing. Uh, I don't know how you'd put your finger on one or two guys or, or any other situation of the ball club and say this is what happened. Uh, I suppose as it's winning, it was just a team effort in losing. Dave Watkins, the catcher up there, one ball, one strike. Actually, the Cardinals pitching staff has a better run average. The Cardinals signing average of the team is better than the Mets. Just one of those years when things just didn't gel. Here's the pitch. Curve in there, a strike off. Two strikes and a ball. Two men are up. We're in the second inning. Watkins hitting 174. Now the stretch by Bob Gibson going for number 20. The pitch. Foul back. Two strikes and a ball. Why would a guy want to be a major league manager? The way they're, gee, there's Dick Williams. He was a genius two years ago.
years ago. Now he's fired. There's Bill Rigby. Everybody thinks he's one of the smartest baseball men around. Here's the pitch. Watson swings from the striking out. Well, I suppose you could put it in the class of ego or pride or a combination of the two. I think that most of us spend 20 years in the game, and we feel like this. I suppose when we get finished, we know more than any other manager that ever ever managed, and uh, I'm sure that there's many, many situations that none of us understand until you get the job, but uh, I think it's a matter of pride and uh, wanting to pass along to some of the other young, the youngsters the things that you feel like you've learned over the years, and it's uh, just a matter of satisfaction and knowing that you can handle men and, and uh, have learned the game well enough to teach it. In other words, it's just the ultimate for a man who has played baseball to be the major league manager who will lead a team in a World Series and a championship. Well, I suppose that would be the ultimate goal. I know as a, as a kid, we certainly all envision ourselves uh, in being on a championship ball club and in a World Series. So I suppose you'd have to carry it further and say that if you manage, that would be the thing you'd want to want to do if you manage. We're talking with Kenny Boyer. We're moving now to the bottom half of the second inning with a score still. The Phillies nothing, the Cardinals nothing. And the count even up at a ball and a strike. They make it two strikes in the ball now. As Kenny Boyer's been our guest. Formerly of the Dodgers, formerly of the Cardinals, formerly of the White Sox and the Mets. Two strikes in the ball. Here's the pitch swim off. Long drive. Way back. This might be the 100th RBI. Home run.
Yeah, uh, Jim Toby just reminded me that Mr. Shandy's also sang before the seventh game of the 64 World Series, but he won that time. Of course, that's a long time ago. <laughs> One strike and no balls, a pitch to Hague, and it's low and outside. Well, this will just give you an idea. M.J. Mercer, Norman, Oklahoma. Now the pitch, a little bit low. Two balls and a strike. One to nothing in favor of the Redbirds. Joe Hague, the hitter. Now the pitch. Grant Jackson waiting. Here it is. He swings and he misses. That evens it up. Two balls, two strikes. Joe Haig, H-A-G-U-E. He's got two homers for the cart. Now the delivery. Strike! Three call. And it's one run, one hit, no airs, and nobody loves him. At the end of the it, St. Louis one, put it up another. We go into the top of the third. Bob Gibson's pitch to Terry Harmon, and it's a strike call. Gibson's given up two hits. He is fan two. He's going for his 20th victory. The pitch swap. High top foul, McCarver. Off with the mask, under the ball, and he makes the catch. Harmon foul to McCarver. That's one away. And it brings up Grant Jackson, a pretty good hitting pitcher. We're in the top of the third. Montreal and Pittsburgh tied 1-1. Pittsburgh batting bottom of the fifth. If the Pirates win, they clinch third place. The Cardinals, therefore, would finish fourth. If the Pirates lose and the Cardinals win, they'll divide third place money. Which isn't much. Here's the pitch and it swung and he misses. Strike one. One strike and no ball. One up. Third inning. the delivery. Here it is. Swung on a high top fly. In foul territory, Lou Brock and Jerry Devannon, and nobody can make the play. Strike two. Well, what in the world is a guy going to do tomorrow night? <laughs> Flying to Ann Arbor, where Missouri plays Michigan Saturday afternoon. Going to be nothing different. Here's the pitch. Inside and low. Two strikes and a ball. Now the pitch. Foul the back. Grand Jack. Second time tonight, a foul ball has landed in a vendor's basket. Popcorn all over the place. Here's strike three. That's the third strikeout. Here it is. 
It's a fastball, a little bit low, ball two. Two balls, no strike. The playoff starts Saturday. Baltimore favored three to two over Minnesota. And the Atlanta Braves are favored 11 to 10 over the Mets. Those are the betting odds as, if you'll excuse the expression, as appears in the newspaper. Three balls and a strike on Jerry Devan. Now the pitch. Long and he fouled it off. Three balls, two strikes. Right-handed hit away. 3-2 pitch. Swung on, fly ball, deep left center field. It'll be caught. Ron Stone waits and he has The man and flies to Stone. One away. Here's Bob Gibson. Gibson has been a tremendous pitcher. Hit or waiting. The wind up, the fit. It's a strike call. Gibson last year had an earned run average of 1.12. Here's a pitch foul. This year is earned run average 2.26. So anytime he pitches, if the Cardinals make three runs, he wins. That's the way he figures out. It hasn't worked out that way, though. They never make three runs when he pitches. Two strikes, no balls. The pitch swung. Foul out of play. One man gone, bottom of the third. Few would have believed me. Boy, we're going to miss some great weather by not having the World Series here. And miss a few other things. Two strikes, no ball. The delivery. Low. One man out, ball game of the third. Beautiful evening. Ah, you can't beat fun at the old ballpark. Two strikes for the ball. Strike three, a slider caught the corner. That's strike on number three for Gibson. Here's Lou Brock. Bounced out his first time up. Batting 298. 12 homer. Every time he fails to hit, his chances of batting 300 just about vanish. Here's the pitch. He bust, and he may beat it out if it stays fair. It goes foul. One strike to no ball. You know, you look at these averages, you certainly can't prove anything. As that being the reason the Cardinals haven't won. Brock hitting 298, Flood 286, Javier 285, Torrey 289 with 100 RBIs, McCarver is off at 263, Shannon is off at 254. Back from the lower end of the batting order, of course, to the stuffer. One ball, one strike, two out, nobody off. Oh, I try to reason why. Just forget it. Bad year. Somebody else won. So what? Here's the pitch. Bunch foul. Who oh, you, sir? Huh? Two strikes and a ball. Signal given. The wind up. Here's the pitch. A high top fly. Shark left field. Shark stop out there makes the play. Terry Harmon takes care. A Bronx pop fly. One, two, three, nothing across. And at the end of three, St. Louis won. Philadelphia nothing. You know, a, a moment ago I asked a photographer who he was, and he said he's with the AP, and now another man's here with the UPI. And they tell me a story who 
Oh, you're from Channel 2. They tell me, tell me a story has just moved on the wire that my contract has not been renewed. My contract's not up until December the 31st, and nobody has told me anything yet. So apparently somebody has told somebody something. At the end of 25 years, you think they'd at least let you know without the press being on the end. At the end of 25 years, they usually give you a gift. They're going to give me a kick in the you-know-what. If these guys are right, these newspaper men, they say UPI has moved the story that my contract has not been removed. Two balls and a strike. Johnny Briggs, the hitter. The pitch is low. Ball three. Three balls, one strike. Well, we might as well have some fun if this is the last one. It won't be the last one. Might be the last one with the team I love, the Cardinals, but it won't be the last baseball I'll ever do, I'll tell you that. I hope. Ball four to Johnny Briggs. Here's Johnny Callis. A runner at first and nobody else. The stretch, the pitch. And it's a little bit low on outside. A runner at first base, Bob Gibson getting set. And now the delivery, swung and a high pop fly, in foul territory. Mike Shannon under the ball, and he has Callison fouls the shot. One gone. Here's Richie Allen. Boy, you know, they really have you in the mood. They really have you in a bind, you know. Uh, you don't want to sound facetious or funny because it's hurting down inside. And yet you know the world hasn't come to an end either. Here's Allen, the pitch there goes, the runner swung and missed. There's a pack, he is. Safe a stolen base. Johnny Briggs steals second. So Richie Allen now has a man in scoring position with one out. Right-handed hitter digging in. The pitch. Swung and he fouled it. Two strikes, no ball. One on, one out. We're in the fourth. Now the pitch on the way. Here it is. A little bit outside. Bob Gibson shooting for number 20. A runner in scoring position with one gone. Now the stretch. The delivery. Low ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. At the belt, the pitch. Ball three. Three balls and two strikes. The wires are hot. Holy man. Why can't they wait until at least the final game is over and then, then bury my body if that's what they want? This is ridiculous. Bang! Ball to Richie Allen. Darren Johnson now steps up. Well, let's see. The Globe Democrat has had me fired. The Post Dispatch has had me fired. The UPI now has the story I've been fired. Here's the pitch, Darren Johnson. Didn't mean to swing a little roller to the first base, but Torrey's got it. Steps on the back for the up. No run. No hits. No errors. One left. And Bob Gibson, working for number 20, has a shutout going. As we move into the bottom of the fourth, St. Louis won. Philadelphia nothing. We go into the bottom of the fourth. The score one to nothing in favor of St. Louis. Kirk Flood will lead it off. 
Joe Torrey, wouldn't it be something if this game ends one to nothing? Bob Gibson wins his 20th. Joe Torrey drives in his 100th win with a homer to win it. Be a nice way to end the season. Kurt Flood rolled out his first time up. The game delayed for a moment as Johnny Briggs goes to center field. Montreal has taken a two to one lead at the end of five over the Pirates. Bob Moose is a no hitter, no hit pitcher working for the Pirates. Here's Flood and he takes it in there for a strike call. Raymond is now relieving though for Montreal in the sixth, so maybe the Pirates are doing something. Now the pitch and it's low. One ball, one strike. Nobody on and nobody out. The delivery. And it's outside ball two. Two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball, left field base hit. Flood drowns a single to left. He's on there. That will bring up Javier. Javier, who fouled out his first time up. Ball game in the fourth. Signal given. The pitch. And it's a strike over the outside corner for me. One strike and no ball. Richie Allen holding the runner on at first base. Now the stretch. The pitch. There's a strike call. A beauty. Two strikes and nothing. We're in the fourth. Each team has had two hits. The difference is Joe Torrey's home run for his 100th run by the day. Two strikes, no more. Now the delivery. Bouncing ball looks like a double play. Darren Johnson, a second one. Tony Taylor can't make a play as Flood went into him hard. Well, there you are. Final game of the season. Doesn't mean a doggone thing. You think they just try to get it over with as quickly as they could. Try not to get hurt. Flood split in hard to Tony Taylor to break up the double play. There are professionals and then there are professionals. One out, here's Joe Torres. The Cardinals have lost, not because they haven't tried their dog on us, I'll tell you that. They've lost because they just haven't had it this year. They can bounce back with the same club maybe and win the next three years. I don't know that it'll happen that way, but I mean, some more as effort and desire and determination have had it all, but they just couldn't get the base hit when they needed it. And that can happen to anybody. One ball and one strike. The pitch. There's a high fly ball in the right. Johnny Callison way back waiting near the track and he has two outs. That will bring up Tim McCarthy. Pittsburgh got two runs. They're leading three to two. If they win, they will have clinched third place. Here's McCarthy. Two outs. A runner at first. The pitch. Swung on and popped up. That'll be an easy out. The second baseman, Tony Taylor. And he has it. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. And at the end of four, St. Louis won. Philadelphia, nothing. We go to the top of the fifth. The Cardinals are leading one to nothing. Ron Stone will be leading it off to the Phillies. And Jack, before I turn it over to you, if these stories are right, <laughs> the more you hear from the various services, the more you got to be convinced that they know what they're talking about, although I have heard nothing about it. I'm going to tell you, one of the things I'm going to miss is 
my association with one of the most talented men I've ever met in my life, meaning you. And so, Mr. Talent, take over in the top of the fifth. Thank you, Harry, and you can double that with regard to my sentiments for you. We go into the fifth inning of the ball game. One to nothing, the Cardinals leading on Torrey's home run in the second inning. Each team two hits in the ball game, and a high fly ball hit to right center by Stone. Flood coming hard, can't get there, and it's a base hit by Stone leading off in the fifth inning. A lead by the runner, Gibson swings, and a fly ball to right. Forces Callison back a couple of steps, but he makes the catch. And that's all in the seventh inning. Gibson is 0 for 3. He flies to right. The Cardinals get no runs, one hit, no errors, a walk. One man out stealing, one man left. The Cardinals have left four, and at the end of seven, they lead Philadelphia 2 to nothing. We go into the top of the eighth. Bob Gibson going for number 20, has a three-hit shutout. And Joe Torrey has driven in both his 100th and 101st run of the season. Dave Watkins, the catcher, is fanned twice. Gibson is fanned eight. The first pitch, low and outside. One ball and no strike. Well, I tell you, here's the pitch. And it's outside, ball two. I went over to the stadium club. I went over to make some arrangements. Even though we're going to finish fourth. I'm going to host a little champagne party in the Cardinal Clubhouse because I don't know <laughs> how many of us are ever going to see each other again, it looks like. So we might as well get have a pop or two. Here's the pitch. Ball four. Watkins draws the base on ball. Here's Terry Hunt. Bob Gibson with a two to nothing lead. Pittsburgh is in it in the process of clinching third place. Now the pitch. Swung and he fouled it back. He had a good cut. One strike and no ball. A runner at first. Nobody out the ball game of the game. One ball, one strike. Terry Harmon. The shortstop. Paul Rangy, right-handed hitter, batting 240, the pitch, curve is a beauty, strike two, two strikes on the ball, a runner at first and nobody out. Now the pitch on the way, line drive, center field base hit, watch the runner at second, he's going to hold. Blood threw a man out earlier. So Harmon lines a single to center. There are runners at first and second with nobody out. And Grant Jackson now will bat for himself, which would indicate that he will advance him along. Jackson is nothing out of two. He's had 11 hits as a batter. He's trying for his 15th victory while Bob Gibson tries for number 20. The stretch the fifth. And he bunts foul off to the left, strike one. One strike and no ball. Now the signal given. Pick off Lance, second, no throw, the pitch to the plate. He was trying to bunt, he was inside. One ball and one strike. Runners at first and second, nobody out. We're in the eighth. Bob Gibson trying for number 20 has a two to nothing lead. Now the pitch, he's gonna bunt it and he does foul. Strike two. And now Bob Gibson to the spot where if he strikes him out, He doesn't have to fear the sacrifice which would put the tying runs in the scoring position. Two strikes and the ball. Now ready. The pitch. He butts. Gibson's going to throw the third. Hey, off that and cross. Everybody is safe. The bases are loaded. And actually... Watkins could have scored. The ball bounced far enough away, but he had split into the bag and he didn't know where the ball was. On air on who? Air on Shannon. The bases 
Gibson Slater with nobody out, and Bob Gibson, to win his 20th game, will have to do it the hard way. Tony Taylor, the bat. Right-handed hitter digging in. The wind up the pitch. Her ball in there, a beauty, a strike is called. Earlier this year in the game, I recall Gibson struck out the side with the bases loaded. Now the wind-up, the pitch. Half swing and he fouled it out of play. Strike two. Two strikes and nothing. Bases loaded, nobody out. We're in the eighth. Final game of the season. Now the delivery, here it is. He tapped his foul. The count is still strike two. Tony Taylor, a tough man in this kind of a spot. He has fanned twice, though, and he has bounced out. Gibson has struck out eight. Now the bet. He struck him out. Tony Taylor, for the third time tonight, goes down swinging. That's nine strikeouts for Gibson. That's one out. Johnny Briggs comes up. Gibson now has fans. 268 men this season. Here's the lineup. The pitch. One out, bouncing ball foul. There's the most men that Bob Gibson has fanned. He struck out 268 miles a season. 270 is his tops. 1965. Here's the pitch to Brick. Inside. One ball, one strike. One out, bases loaded. Cardinals are leading two to nothing. Infield playing back, hoping for a double play. Briggs is a tough man to double up the pitch. Popped up on the infield. That'll be an easy out. Jerry Devanna under the ball. He's got it. But he had slid into the bag and he didn't know where the ball was. On air on who? The bases loaded with nobody out, and Bob Gibson, to win his 20th game, will have to do it the hard way. Tony Taylor, the bat. Right-handed hitter digging in. The wind-up the pitch. Her ball in there with beauty, a strike is called. Earlier this year in the game, I recall Gibson struck out the side with the bases loaded. Now the windup, the pitch. Half swing and he fouled it out of play, strike two. Two strikes and nothing. Bases loaded, nobody out. We're in the eighth. Final game of the season. Now the delivery, here it is. He tapped his foul. The count is still strike two. Tony Taylor, a tough man in this kind of a spot. He has fanned twice, though, and he has bounced out. Gibson has struck out eight. Now the bet. He struck him out. Tony Taylor, for the third time tonight, goes down swinging. That's nine strikeouts for Gibson. That's one out. Johnny Briggs comes up. Gibson now has fans. 268 men this season. Here's the lineup. The pitch. It's one on bouncing ball foul. There's the most men that Bob Gibson has fans. He struck out 268 last season. 270s is top. 1965. Here's a pitch to Briggs. Inside. One ball, one strike. One out, bases loaded. Cardinals are leading two to nothing. Infield playing back, hoping for a double play. Briggs is a tough man to double up the pitch. Popped up on the infield. That'll be an easy out. Jerry Devanna under the ball. He's got it. Two out. And now he's got Johnny Callison coming up. With the bases loaded. A moment ago, the bases were loaded with nobody out. Now the bases are loaded with two out. And they still haven't scored. Can Bob Gibson do it here? 
Callison is nothing out of three. Left-handed batter. Into the windup, the fence. High pop foul out of play into the left field corner. Got around late on a fastball. Pittsburgh is about to clinch. Third place. They lead Montreal 8-2 in the ninth. One strike, no ball. Here's the fifth. Little wide of fastball. Bob Gibson has pitched four shutouts and leads the team. One ball, one strike. Here it is. Swung and he missed strike two. Two strikes on the ball. Bases are jammed. Two men are out. We're in the eighth. Cardinals are leading two to nothing. The windup by Gibson, the pitch. Base hit, up the middle, one run is in. The game is tied. The second run scores. Here goes the runner to third. He got two out with the bases loaded, but couldn't get the other one. With two strikes in the ball, Johnny Callison lined a single of center. Scoring Watkins and Harmon. Brad Jackson raced to third. Here's Richie Allen now. The stretch. The pitch. Low outside fastball. One ball, no strike. Darren Johnson will be next. Final game of the year. Now the delivery. Here it is. Low and outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strike. Ball game of the eighth. Stretch the fifth. He swung at a bad pitch. He tried to stop. He had gone around. The ball popped away from a carver, but he recovered it in time. Two, two tie. Each team has made five hits. Each team has made one air. Two balls and a stretch. The stretch. The pitch. Low ball three. That might be the best thing that could happen is for him to be walked. But you can hardly do it intentionally with runners at first and third. So Gibson is pitching carefully. 3-1 pitch. Into the dirt. Ball four. The bases are loaded again. And here's Darren Johnson. So Bob Gibson's hopes of a shutout victory for number 20 have been destroyed. Now he's battling for his life for the victory. Darren Johnson's had one out of three. Ball game in the top of the eighth. Now the signal given. Here's the pitch. A foul back. Out of play. Strike one. One strike and a ball. Here's the pitch on the way. High curveball inside. One ball, one strike. Santiago Guzman warming up in the bullpen. Now the delivery, here it is. Popped up around of the inning, but they've tied the score. Mike Shannon under the ball, and he's got it. That retires the stop. Two runs, two hits. One air, and three left. We move into the bottom of the eighth, all tied up two and two. Carry and Jack Buck from Bush Memorial Stadium. Bottom of the eighth, tied up two and two. Cincinnati is murdering Atlanta tonight, but I imagine the Braves are still celebrating. Here's Lobron to lead it off. Pittsburgh has finished third in the Eastern Division. By beating Montreal 8-2, to two, they've clinched third place. And so the overwhelming favorite to win the championship this year, the Cardinals will finish fourth. Here's the pitch low. Lou Brock is half, one out of three. One ball, no strikes, the fifth. There's a line drive in the left. Stone is there waiting, he's got it. Rock line to Stone. Bob Moose, the 22-year-old rookie right-hander, 
who pitched a no-hitter against the Mets a week or so ago, was the winner for the Pirates tonight. It was his 14th victory against only three defeats. 2,700 watched the game. Here's the pitch to flood at the top side. One ball, no strikes, one out. Now the delivery. Swung on any minute. One ball and one strike. One out. The delivery. There's a smash on the ground. Harmon's got it. Over to first, easy up. Two up, two down. Javier is nothing out of three. Looking ahead to the Phillies' ninth right. Ron Stone will be leading it off. Javier, nothing out of three tonight. Two out, nobody on base. Here's the pitch. High pop fly. Johnny Callison coming in. This will be an easy inning. He's got it, not retired the side. At the end of eight, tied up two and two. And welcome. Brock hitting 298 now. His chances of finishing at 300 become more minimized. Here's Stone to lead it off. First pitch in there, strike. 11,680, a wonderful crowd, I think, under the circumstances. Here's the pitch. Fly ball, center field, what? Converging on in the head. 13,414 total. 11,680 paid, and the Cardinals wind up. Here's a pitch outside. 1,682,583 official paid attendance for the year. One out, Dave Watkins, the batter, the pitch by Bob Gibson, low and outside. Joe Torrey will be leading it off in the bottom of the ninth. Do you think he can end it the way he started the scoring with a home run? Two balls, no strike. Torrey has driven in both runs. Here's the pitch. There's a strike call. Two balls and a strike. Two balls and a strike. There's a pitch low. Ball three. One man out. Ball game of the night. What cap Grant down the bullpen. Three balls and a strike to pitch. Looping liner, sharp center, flood, can't reach it. Face it. What gun singles to set? So they now have six hits. One more than the cart. Here's Terry Harmon. He's one out of three. Here's the pitch. High ball to center, flood under the ball. He's waiting. And he has it. Two men are gone. And Grant Jackson will be the hitter. Jackson is nothing out of three. He's a fine pitcher. He's had a good year. He's won 14, lost 17, earned run average 3.47. He's won 14 games for a team that's won only 63 all year. So he's won better than one-fourth of the ball game. Two men are out, a runner at first. The stretch, the bet. Swung and he missed. Mudcat Grant warming up. I don't think Mudcat has any chance to get into this ball game or anybody else as long as Gibson has a chance to win it. Here's a pitch swung and foul tip. Two strikes, no off. It's only because he has a chance to win his 20th that he's pitching at all. He would have been bypassed like everybody else, except for the fact that he's earned the right to win 20. And that's what he's getting. Two strikes or nothing. 
Bouncing ball to the right, a base hit. Here's a runner on to second base holding up. Grant Jackson bounces a single to center. That's a right, rather. And here is Tony Taylor. He's fanned three out of the four times. He bounced out the other time. And if you know Tony Taylor, you got to worry more about him right now than anybody else in their lineup. These are the kind of situations he is tough in. Runners at first and second, two out. Right-handed batter digging in. The pitch. Bouncing ball, we should be out of the inning. Devan it in. Scoops it up and throws in time. Jerry Devan had charged that ball nicely. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left. They've stranded eight. We go into the bottom of the ninth. One run will win it for the Cardinals. The score tied two and two. All right, Jack. Joe Torrey, who's been the offense, he's now driven in 101 runs for the season. Grant Jackson, who's been an outstanding pitcher, could he have gotten away from Torrey, he would have won this game. Joe Torrey. What a dramatic way to end the season, however bad it may have been, to win a game in the bottom of the ninth with a home run. Here's the windup and the pitch. And it's high, ball one. One ball and no strikes. Grant Jackson's pitch. Pops it up. Richie Allen under the ball. And he makes the cut. Torrey fouled Allen. That's one out, and here's McCarthy. Cardinals have had five hits. Tip of the Cardinal cap reads the board. To you fans, for your loyal support through the 1969 season. See you next year, it reads up there. <laughs> hey, that was quote and unquote. That's what's up on the board. Here's the pitch. And the Carver takes a strike. Well... Ground ball hit by McCarver to Richie Allen. He's got it. Steps on the bag in time. Two up, two down. I shan't all be the batter. I understand UPI has read a story on their wire, and that's you. One of the international news services. Here's the pitch, and Shannon fouls one back, out of play, strike one. But they know definitely that I have been fired. Well, I tell you, it could easily happen. But why would they know first? Or why would anybody else know first? That's what's really grinding inside of me after 25 years. Here's the pitch, outside. One ball and one strike. Two men are out. Mike Shannon, the back. Now the delivery. Strike call. Shannon waiting. Oh, what Mike loved to get hold of one. The pitch. Shannon goes down swing. One, two, three. Nothing at cross. So, the season started with an extra inning game in St. Louis. The season will end with an extra inning game in St. Louis. In the first game of the year, which went 14 innings, the Pirates won. Now let's hope in the last game of the season, however many innings it's going to go, it's got to go at least 10 now. Let's hope that the Cardinals can turn it around. It's tied up 2-2 at the end of the night. Johnny Briggs fouls off the first pitch. Now Gibson's delivery. Swung on. High top fly. 
Left field, Brock under the ball. He makes the catch in foul territory. No break. Pops out to Brock. One man out. And here's Johnny Callison who tied it up. With a two-out bases loaded single in the eighth. That drove into two runs this time. The wind-up for fifth. Long drive foul into the stand. One strike and no ball. Pittsburgh clinch third place tonight. Now the delivery swung on. Bouncing ball. Javier over the first in time. Now Richie Allen. Nothing out of three. Here's the pitch. High fly ball, deep right field. Higgs got room on the track. He's waiting. Makes the catch. They go down in order. One, two, three. Allen, fly deep ahead. Remove it at the bottom of the tenth. Tied up two, two. Here's Joe Higgs. A long belt would end the season. Here's the pitch by Grant Jack. It's a strike. Haig has had one out of three. Struck out his first two times and then six. Left-handed batter holds the bat high. The pitch. There's a smash right field base hit. Joe Haig singles to right. The winning run is on. And here's Jerry Devanin. Devanin is nothing out of two. Grant Jackson has gone all the way. That's only the sixth hit he's allowed. Dabalicho is going to run for Higgs. Here's George Kissel coming down the line. The third base coach to talk to Jerry Devan. Runner at first to nobody out. Now the strike. The pitch. Takes it low, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Final game of the year. Now the signal given. The delivery. Low and inside. New York has won the Eastern Division. Chicago has finished second. Pittsburgh third. St. Louis fourth. Philadelphia fifth and Montreal last. Now the stretch. The throw to first. In the West Division, Atlanta, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Los Angeles, Houston, and San Diego. The way they finish. Here's the pitch. He throws. Hell up. Ball three. He walked in the seventh. Flat out of the fifth. Flat out in the seventh. Three balls. No strike. Devanna looking at Kissel. Signal given. Three balls, no strike. Davalicho, lead off first. The pitch. Strike right in there. And now the count is three and one. Devanin getting set. The 3-1 pitch. Here it is. Strike two. And now it's down to three and two. And will he try to bump with two strikes? Will they get the runner going? Will they hit away? Three balls, two strikes. Here's the stretch. The pitch. Strike three call. Boy, what a job of pitching by Grant Jackson. And now here is Bob Gibson. How about winning your own game, Ralph?
Roberts. Ball game in the bottom of the tent. Tied up two and two. The stretch, the pitch. Low inside, ball one. One ball, no strike. There's the lead off first base by Davalicho. The pitch. Swung and he fouled it back and he had a good sell. and one strike. Right-handed hitter digging in. And now the pitch. He bunts. Back to the ball. He may beat it out. The throw. He's out on a good play by Grant Jackson. So it'll be a sacrifice for Gibson. He was really trying to bunt for a hit on that one. And now he's got the winning run in scoring position. And here's Lou Brock. Watkins, the catcher, out talking to the pitcher, Jackson. Redbirds trying to end it with a victory. They started it with a 14-inning loss for Pittsburgh. Bob Gibson, on that occasion, pitched the first nine innings, but was not the loser. Here's the fifth. Bouncing ball to Shannon. 
Waiting for the hop, he'll throw the first in time for the out. And Heisel still holds second base. Here's Terry Harmon now. Two men are out. Looking ahead to the bottom of the 11th, it'll be Flood, Javier, and Torrey. Terry Harmon has had one out of four. Larry Heisel, the runner at second base. The stretch and the pit. Fast ball, a little bit low ball. One, one ball, no strikes. Two men are gone, a runner in scoring position. Now the pit. Curve ball outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. We're in the 11th. Well enough to win, but doesn't get enough runs to do so. And 
batting going for his 20th. The pitch to Tony Taylor. High. The pitch. He struck him out. A good curveball. And that's the first strikeout since the eighth. And the tenth strikeout of the game. That's the 269th of the season for Bob Gibson. His all-time high is 270. Here's Johnny Briggs with two out the pit. Swore along in the The pitch to Briggs. High fly ball. Easy out. Flood in right center. Waiting. He takes it. Six in a row. Retired by Gibson. We go to the bottom half of the 12th. Tied up. Two and two. Well, I don't think anything has to be said for the integrity of the game of baseball, but I think you have a pretty good example here. The Cardinals cannot catch the Pittsburgh Pirates for the number three spot in the Eastern Division of the National League. It already has been completed, New York, Chicago, and Pittsburgh, and the best the Cardinals can do is end up one game behind the Pirates. And for the Phillies, well, they're not going anywhere. Grant Jackson's record, he can't get to the 500 mark. His record is 14 and 17. Gibson, of course, has a lot at stake with 20 wins, but with regard to these Phillies, they're not just turning over and playing dead for the Cardinals. They've been battling right down the line. They tied the game in the eighth inning, and now we find ourselves in the bottom of the 12th inning. Out there in the board, they put to the Cardinal Usherettes. Thanks for the cake, I suppose the Usherettes gave their boss out here evening, a cake at the end of the year. It's always a sad occasion on the final day or night of the baseball season. Well, the fans have been on, Shannon, most of the evening. He's leading off in the bottom of the 10th inning against Grant Jackson. Shannon has had one out of four. Here's the pitch. And it's low. Well, it was two to two in the first game of the season at this time. Three two pitch, here it is. Ball four he won. So there's the winning run on. And here's Vic Dabalicho. Vic, Vic Dabalicho came in as a pitch runner for Joe Hay. After Hay got his second hit in the night in the attempt. Hague fanned his first two times up. Probably the first time he ever saw Grant Jackson. But he singled against a tough left-hander in the seventh, and he singled again in the tenth. Here's Grant Jackson's pitch. A little tap. He might advance the man at that. They don't throw the second, they throw the first. So Domelicho, after failing to sacrifice, taps slowly enough to the pitcher. Forget what is tantamount to a sacrifice, although he is not so credited. Here's Jerry Devanna now. And they're going to walk Devanna intentionally to get the Gibson. So they're giving Bob a chance to win his own game. And I, for one, am happy to see this. Runners the first and second with one out. Here's the strike. The pitch to Gibson. Bouncing ball to third. Steps on third one out. Throws to first. Wild throw. Pulls him off the bag. No double play. Now it's Luke Brock who can end it off. They got the runners. The pitch. Oh, four. He walked him. That's the third walk of the inning off Grant Jackson. Here's Flood. Do you think he can walk his fourth man at the inning? Three balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. The Cardinals win on a base on ball. Grant Jackson wound up walking four men in the inning. And Jerry Devannon has scored the winning run. And the Red Runners in the third inning to beat the Phillies three to two. And Bob Gibson has won number 20. We'll be back with the totals in a minute. Well, that's it. And to the tune of all Lang Syne, a crowd of a little better than 13,000, of which 11,680 want to 
the exit, having seen Bob Gibson for the first time during his career win 20 games or better. And this year was exactly 20, and he had a pitch 12 tough innings together. Here are the totals. Three runs, six hits, one air for the Cardinals. Bob Gibson, the winner now, 20 and 13. For the Phillies, two runs, eight hits, one air. Grant Jackson, who pitched an excellent ball game, until he tired as he walked four men in the bottom of the 12th. Jackson, the loser, he now has won 14, lost 18. Time of the ball game, two hours and 15 minutes. Now, Jack will have a rundown of all the other baseball coming up in a moment, and following that, we'll have our post-game interview. So, this is it. Another baseball season. The Cardinals finished fourth this year, and hopeful, of course, of doing much better next year. Again, as we said before, many, many thanks. Your wires are much appreciated. Your expressions. Thanks so much for your support. I hope we'll have a chance to see each other again somewhere sometime. And I hope right here. So, speaking now for engineer Merle Perry and for our producer, Al Chance, for Jack Buck, Harry Carey, wishing you all a very pleasant good evening from Bush Memorial Stadium, where the Cardinals edge the Phillies in 12 innings, 3 to 2, with Bob Gibson winning his 20th victory of the season. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast and the season. See you somewhere along the line. So long, everybody. And that's it on the Cardinals scoreboard. The Cardinals in 12, won it 3 to 2 for Harry Carey. And Al Chance has been our producer all season long in the finale of the 1969 campaign. We certainly thank you for 